Well, good morning. Before I start this morning, I want to, I really sense that God's wanting to do something this morning. Um, I don't know. Does God have, uh, does anybody have something that God's speaking to them or does somebody have a question that's on their heart? Nobody? What is it? I was just... I, ha- I have a message prepared, which is great. However, I sense that God wants to do something else this morning here, too. That's why I was asking, yes. Um, Probably my question is, which I should know this, um, when I think I've forgiven somebody and then something said or heard their name or whatever, I know I didn't completely forgive them. And I want to. Okay, wow. why am I not? Good question. The question was, I think I've forgiven people, then something comes up, and then I realize I really haven't. What do I need to do? It's interesting. I had some people I've never met before. They are do work for the city of Ocala, doing cleaning up the streets and mowing the edges, and they pulled in the other day here at the church and said, hey, can we park our equipment here? And uh, they have done that in the past, but they've never asked me. And so I said, sure. I said, as long as you don't think I'm responsible for your equipment. They said, no problem. And so um, I was going up to water the front plants a few minutes later, and I stopped and I said, so are you guys the one that do the mowing and clean up around here? And I got talking to this guy and his son, I imagine, a young guy anyway. And this is exactly where he went in our conversation. And he says, I have a question for you. And I said, I hope I can answer you. And he says, you know, I have somebody that really hurt me, the exact a couple of them. And he said, you know, I keep trying to, I think I forgive them, and then something happens every now and then that brings it back up. How do I forgive? Um, of course, after talking to him for a few minutes, I kind of felt like it was an ex-wife or something like that. And before it was said and done, sure enough, it was a friend that hit up with his wife and ended up with him being divorced and all that mess and all the pain, all the rejection, all the betrayal that goes with all that. And um, here is what I said to him. And, and I think we all struggle with it from time to time. You realize that forgiveness is a choice. Okay? I want to help you because it's not a feeling. How many of you like it when forgiveness comes easy and it feels good? Most of the time, for me, forgiveness does not necessarily come easy. I forgive, and I must be honest, selfishly. Because forgiveness sets me free. You realize that when we don't forgive, we're in bondage. You take like him, in his case, he's sitting hurting today because he hasn't forgiven his wife. You know what? His wife may be out there not thinking one thing about him. So who's really hurting? Him. Yes, we're going to go on. I'm I'm going to follow the whole bunny trail because it matters. We're going to follow the whole bunny trail because different people, by the way, different people are different stages in forgiving. The next thing I want to say is forgiveness is progressive. In other words, just because I choose to forgive today, then 
tomorrow something else may come up and we'll, something will touch that hurting spot. And what happens? We remember the pain. And what do we do? We rehearse generally what that person has done in memory or verbally or whatever. The second thing I don't do is I refuse to rehearse the hurt again. Can I say that where your thoughts go, your emotions go? I find it interesting that Jesus says he forgave our sins and cast them into the sea of his forgetfulness, never to use them against us again. You see, when, when, when we've been hurt, God says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When we've been hurt, we feel somebody owes us something, whether it's respect, an acknowledgement that they did wrong, all that kind of stuff. And so what we feel like is I am not going to let go of this until they get what they have coming. You really want your person to hurt you to either suffer or at least acknowledge they're wrong so you can go on. Is that true? Most of the time that's the case. Okay? Um, and so one of the things I determine is I am not going to rehearse it. So the next time it comes to me, I say, no, I forgive them. Now, if you are a Christian, God has forgiven you all of your sins. How many of you are thankful for that? Well, at least there's a couple of you that... Some of you aren't very excited because must be you don't think your sin was too bad since you didn't. Yeah, me! <laughs> Let me ask you a question. What do you deserve for your sin? Maybe we need to go where we really need to go. We deserve eternal damnation in hell. And I know today the world has made hell seem like it's not real. Let me tell you something. Hell is real. Jesus said it over and over again. And it's torment. So I refuse to rehearse it. When I was talking to the guy the other day, I told him, reminded him of the story in the Word of God where there was a man who had a debt of probably, in our culture, about $30 million. And his master said, pay up the debt. And he said, I can't do that. Please have mercy on me. Because the penalty was be, to be cast in prison until the debt was paid. By the way, that's kind of like the story with alimony. You know what they do. They throw you in prison and jail for 30 days. I don't know how that helps the other person. Okay, I'm not sure. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but... At the same token, I guess I understand the theory. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give them consequences. They don't want to repeat it. And so the guy forgave that person all of their debts. As soon as he walks out the door, what does he do? Bumps into a guy about two days wages, maybe a hundred or two bucks, and says, pay me. And the guy says, I can't. Just give me a few days. What does he do? Throws that person in prison. So the master hears that and calls the guy in and said, you owed me a debt that you could never pay, and I forgave you it totally. And I hear that you just threw this guy in jail until he pays his debt. And he says, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I've forgiven your debt, so I can't bring it back. He says, I'm going to turn you over to the tormentor. And what happened was, that guy totally lost his peace and was in torment the rest of his life. And here's what Jesus says to you and I. He said, unless we forgive like he has, he will do the same thing to you and I. When we choose to repeat the offense... What are we doing? Refusing to forget their debt and you will lose your peace. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you have been going along and everything going good, and then somebody brings up somebody, and before you know it, you go on this half-hour rampage about how terrible they are and what they've done. And, and, and when you're done, all of a sudden, you're so depressed and you feel so empty. You know what? <laughs> you have brought that on yourself by refusing to ag- repeat the offense. So we can determine we're not going to repeat the offense. And the guy says, okay, I, I think I've done that pretty good too. So I said to him, well, there's a couple other things the Bible tells us to do. And uh, we can open up our Bibles because uh, this is, to me, is a lifelong challenge. Uh, Matthew chapter, what chapter? Uh, chapter 5, I think. Matthew? I believe chapter 5. Let me read to you what is one of my greatest desires to be fulfilled in my lifetime. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 through 48. Let me read it. And I say unto you, love your enemies. And I say unto you, love your enemies. By the way, is that possible? Yes. Not in our strength. No, but it is possible. He w- if he tells us it's possible, but to love your enemies doesn't come natural, does it? No. One of the things I find is that God's kingdom is upside down of the earthly kingdom. And he tells us to do a lot of things that are contrary to what this world tells us to do. Okay? So he says... I love it. It, it, Let me read verse 43 because you need to get in the context. You have heard it been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you here. Let's go on and read the rest. I'm going to come back and talk for a minute. That you may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and the rain on the just and the unjust. For if we love them which love you, what reward do you have? Do not the sinners do the same thing? And if you salute your brother only, what are you more than anybody else? Sinners do that too. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. God gives us two ways to help deal with our unforgiveness. God says, if you want to be perfect like me, how many of you want to be like him? I do. Okay? I desire to be like him. I know that I can't do it in my strength, that's for sure. So he tells us, here's what we need to do with our enemies. Love your enemies. What does love your enemies mean? Okay? To love them is to accept who they are and want what's best for them. That's the simplest solution in love. Okay? By the way, does that mean we have to cuddle up to them? No. No. Okay? <laughs> All right? Now, we'll talk about that because there, there's, there's a rest of the story you got to go with it. Okay? So he says, choose to accept them and want what's best for them. And I know some people say, well, I think what's best is for them to spend about 30 years in jail. Okay? I think that's what's best. Okay? By the way, God tells us to treat others. You know, one time somebody treated me wrong, and, 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 and I prayed. I know you, you're probably nicer than I am. And I prayed, God, sick them. I, I know you don't do that. But I said, God, sick them. And God said, okay. Now, my question is, is that how you want me to deal with you when you mess up too? No, Lord, no. And I said, well, heavens no. He said, I said, treat others the way I, you want me to treat you and others to treat you. And so I said, okay, God, you know what they have need of. Bless them. Here's what God says to us. Listen, he says this. He says, vengeance is his He will deal with it in his time. By the way, Roy McKinney version. 
in his time and his way. I want to, I want to say to you, God's desire is never to destroy anybody. His earnest desire is redemption. You and I, in our immaturity, our selfishness, and our humanness, aren't so inclined when somebody's really hurt us. And so he says, you let me deal with it in my time and my way. In order to do that, let's say somebody owed me a hundred dollars and hadn't paid me like they said they would the only way that I'm going to get past it is to give that hundred dollars to God I was in a meeting sometime my brother Gary who is that was a head of YWAM Spain for I don't know eons he's, he's much older than I am so uh, He's one year older. Uh, uh, Still pretty old, though. <laughs> and what happened was, so he was in charge of what, all that happened in Spain, and I don't know the whole story. I just heard him mention this uh, in some meeting we had about a year ago here. And he said, uh, we had somebody kind of steal a base from us, which was, you know, the buildings and all the property and all that. And uh, he said he went and tried to deal with that guy and get it right. And the guy refused to deal with it and do it right. He says, so I have given that to God. He said, if that guy were to come and say, hey, I want to give back to YWAM what I stole, he said, it's not mine anymore. He says, not YWAM's. I gave that to God. Do you hear me? I gave that to God. I'm talking about millions of dollars. That's what God's saying to us. He says, will you take that wrong and give that to me and let me deal with that person in the way I see fit? You see, if you really gave it to God, it wouldn't bother you because it's no longer yours. Now that's easy maybe with $100 or a million dollars. It's a whole other thing when it's your wife. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. By the way, can we give our wife to God too? Yeah. Oh, you don't want one. I'm glad to hear that. That's <laughs> encouraging. That's really encouraging. Woo. Do you hear what I'm saying? So, it's, it's one thing to say, I haven't got the million dollars. I've lived without for, you know, 10 years. So if I don't have the million dollars, I'll live without it because you have. However, some things seem to be a lot more complicated. God says, let me deal with that thing. By the way, what does the guy feel like? My wife owes me faithfulness. And my friend owes me faithfulness. By the way, is, can he ever get that back? No. It's already gone. So what does he have to do with it? If he doesn't forgive and let it go, he will be in torment the rest of his life. By the way, he is in torment. Okay. Let me go on to say what he said. So I said, the word of God tells us things we can do. Let me read it to you. He says, bless them that curse you. So what is he saying to us? He's saying, to curse means to speak evil of. And so he gives us one of the answers. We will not rehearse the wrong that was done with us in order to forgive. Boy, that's awful hard, isn't it? Yes. So if you don't rehearse the evil that was done to you, 
and say, God, I give that debt to you. You deal with it whenever, however. And be exact, I believe God wants us to get to the point where he did me. The way I can say, God, I really don't want that person to suffer either. So have mercy on them, just like you've had mercy on me. How many of you have experienced the mercy of God? At least some of you realize you have. You don't know it, but this morning you experienced the mercy of God. Okay? Because he doesn't owe you a darn thing. He doesn't owe you the next breath that you take, and he gives you the next breath you're going to take right now. And that's his mercy. So we experience his mercy all day long, every day. So, basically, he says, refuse to speak evil of that person. Now, I gave you part of your answer, that you aren't going to say anything to anybody about it again. You're going to give that debt to God and say, when it comes up, say, no, I gave that to God. I'm not going to rehearse that. Right? It's a big deal. And when that person, by the way, I believe God's intention is restoration and redemption. How many of you do? Yes, do, do you know that God cares about your relationships? Yes, I know. And so when that person comes, when God's not dealing with them, and if they respond right, you know what they're going to do? They're going to come to you and ask forgiveness. So what should our response be? No. I forgave you way back then. You're already forgiven. You see, them coming to you to ask forgiveness is for them, not you. Because you and I should forgive as soon as something. Hey, the sooner we forgive, the better off we are because the more we rehearse it, the more it hurts and the more our heart gets hardened and so it becomes more and more difficult to forgive. Right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay? So my, my recommendation is forgive as soon as it happens. Good heavens. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. I mean, get it dealt with. Realizing the enemy of your soul is going to bring it up again. Isn't he? Even though you determine in your heart, I'm going to forgive. And from your heart, really release them and say, I give that to you, God. I choose to forgive them. The enemy is going to bring it up. Believe you me. Because he wants you to be entrapped. Because once you get entrapped to your own forgiveness, God said, if you don't forgive others their debts, what happens? I will not forgive you yours. Boy, that's really stuck. <laughs> Whoops. Yes. Right? Well, you have re- realized forgiveness is progressive. You see, you see, when the enemy brings up the memory, we have to choose, have I given that to God or have I not? And if I've given it to God, then you know what? I'm not going to rehearse it, nor am I going to repeat it. Well, the enemy loses power. And especially if you, the other part of that, he says don't curse, but he also says to what? Bless. Bless. What does that mean? <laughs> that means she didn't do it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Bless means, you know what I like best about that person? That's the bless. By the way, bless is say, God bless them. You know what they need? Bless them. And really mean it from our heart. Now, you and I cannot do that in our strength. We've got to go to God and say, God, look here. I know you have forgiven me 100%, and you will never bring it up again. And so I want to be like you. So will you help me to bless, not curse? Will you help me to really release that debt to you 
Because God wants to change our heart and for our heart to become like his heart. How many of you appreciate the fact that God's forgiven your sin? Then shouldn't we do the same? You know, I hate it when I have to talk like this because you know what I know is going to happen? I have to live this out tomorrow. (laughs) And I can't be bitter towards my wife when she does something because, you know, I got to forgive her. Have you you ever noticed? Can can, can I? can, 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 Can I tell you something that really bugs me? Maybe it doesn't bug you. In the Bible, you know what it says? Husbands don't get bitter towards your wife. It doesn't say wives don't be bitter towards your husband. I don't get it. I don't get it. But it sure has saved my wife and I a whole lot of grief because as soon as I have a tendency to want to hold something against them, God says, I told you, don't get bitter towards your wife. And because I love God and I learned to obey him, I choose to forgive her then and there. It doesn't mean we don't talk about it, by the way. I think we do need to talk about things. But for relationship's sake, we talk about it, not to straighten them out, not to get back at them and, and all that. It's for relationship's sake we talk about it, saying, I'm talking about this because it really hurt me, and I want you to know that. And how do we keep this from happening again? It's called care fronting, where I come from. Caring enough to confront, but confronting in love, not blaming, accusing, or judging, but really seeking to understand and be understood. Boy, that's a trip. So it tells us to love your enemy, bless them, don't curse them. Then the thing that, you know, this, I really don't think it's right. I mean, they have to do this. However, I know it's the right answer. And he says this, do good to the person that hurts you. Look for opportunities to do good to the person that hurts you. I have a story. I went to Bible school. Uh, I, I, know you'd never, I know you'd never know it. Uh, but I went to Bible school many years ago. And uh, when I was in Bible school, the, I was going to a church, and then I was going to the Bible school, and come to find out they were in the middle of a split with them. And each one wanted me to take their side. And I refused to take either one side, so I was the enemy of both. Can, can I, can, can I, I, w- I want to tell you something that I went through two years to learn. You can learn it in just a matter of a few minutes. I want to tell you a story. Anytime anybody asks you to be choose between one person and another, Satan is the divider of the brethren. And if you choose to take sides, listen, you're doing Satan's work. And I learned that over the next two years. What was that? What did I start that story for? Oh, anyway, <laughs> yes, that's right. I, I remember now. So, so what happened? So what happened was, when I was going to Bible school, something came up and happened, and, and we had to do some kind of service project. And so I chose to do a service project to going into a maxi prison that was there in the, near the city. And I went with this uh, guy. Or actually, I ch- chose to do this. Well, this one guy was for the other side, and so he was critical of them. Of course, they didn't trust me, and the other side didn't trust me either because I refused to take their sides. And uh, somehow, something got blown out of whack between this guy and I, and he took it to the leadership, and the leadership said, you know, you're, you're, you're having a wrong attitude about this. And I said, okay, whatever. And um, so, so, so when it came time for me to do the project, God spoke to me, and he said, I want you to choose him to be your partner. And I said, that's the last place I want to be. <laughs> He's going to twist what I have to say, and then I, I'm going to get in trouble again. I don't want to do that. Well, as stubborn as I am, I'm smart enough to do what God speaks to me. 
And why did God speak that to me? Listen. You can't walk in unforgiveness and choose to walk in fellowship. So, I chose that guy. We went to the prison and did uh, a season. Sure as shoot, would you believe about two, three weeks in it, something came up and he twisted what I had to say again and went to the people and, and they got on me again. And I said, God, this ain't fair. This isn't right. God says, will you bless him? And so he asked me to bless him. And I blessed him. Listen, I, I, just, I, I want you to hear what I have to say. In order to really forgive, we need to be serious about it. If you don't, you're going to pay a high price because you're going to be in torment and God will judge you for your sin one day because you refuse to forgive others there. And when you stand before God, God will say, no, you can't come in because you refuse to forgive them. And I told you, if you don't forgive others, I will not forgive you. Listen, the rest of us are hopeless without God's forgiveness. Amen. Salvation is also progressive. God forgives all my sin here and today, but you know what? I know, I'm, you, you can find out what a terrible guy I am. I sin at least once a day, generally. Okay? Am I proud of that? No. Because if I fall short of the glory of God, I'm sinning. And there's no good sin. You know, we always like to compare it. You know, I can't believe it. You know, in prison, they, they try to kill any child molester, but that same person's in prison for killing some other person. And, and they think they're more righteous than that person. There isn't any good sin. We always like to minimize our sin and make ourselves look good. Okay? So you realize being impatient in traffic is sin. Right, Eric? Yeah. Right, Eric? What happened last time? <laughs> <laughs> My wife can prove the consequences of sin. We have our car totaled in the back in our driveway right now. Yeah, see? Yeah, I bought, I bought her a new car. She got blessed. We aren't going to go. Anyway, I blessed her for her sin. No, I didn't get bitter. I blessed her with the car. Okay. Where are we going to go from here? Okay. No, no. My question to you is how serious are you about wanting to forgive? <laughs> because God gives us answers. His word tells us very clearly. He says, hey, you know the people that curse his name, he still causes the rain to fall on them and the sun to shine on them. He says, hey, I'm good to those who don't deserve it. He said, anybody can be good to those who are good to them. That's, that's no. But if you want to be like me, how many of you want to be like him? Kind of half lag, right? <laughs> the price seems pretty high. No, let me tell you something. It sets you free. <laughs> no, get, you don't get it. He says that because he doesn't want us walking in torment. He doesn't want us to say, he doesn't want us to stand before him one day and he says, no, you go to hell because you wouldn't forgive others. So he tells us that saying, no, I'm saying this for your sake. Yes. Okay, good. That, don't worry. You're, you're one step ahead of me. Good. You're leading me into the next statement. Uh, okay, that's called reconciliation. Okay. Uh, by the way, you're you're going to you're going to less. Uh, let me. I'm. A, I'm, I'm. It's a good subject. I went there with this guy too. I said. Um, I forgive to set me free. God is a God of reconciliation. 
Is he? In the message I prepared for this morning, and I really didn't feel like God was speaking it, so I didn't want to give it because I said, God, you're wanting to do something else this morning. He says, we are ministers of reconciliation. What is reconciliation? Bringing back together. Now, let me help you with that. In relationships... There are four legs to a quality relationship. Anybody tell me what they are? Love, acceptance, forgiveness. Love, acceptance, forgiveness, and who, who said that? Trust. Very good. Those are the four legs to any quality relationship. Love, Acceptance, forgiveness, and trust. Okay, just a minute. Good question. Well, you guys are right with me this morning. Hey, go, ahead, go ahead and tell me, Pastor, the next point is, because I know you don't know where to go. Let me help you. By the way, all this is saying we're following it logically through, aren't we? Yeah. So what we're talking about is following logically through, saying, oh, yeah, that would be the next thing. Let me tell you what. We give three out of four freely. We give love, acceptance. By the way, love is to what? Come on, I told you to begin. Well, what is love? No. It's to accept who they are and want what's best for them. That's loving them. And God wants us to love everybody. Right? Does he or does he not? Yeah, sure he does. Okay? He tells us to. <laughs> he, he, but we can't do that in our strength, by the way, again. Everything I'm telling you, you can't do in your strength. You got to go to God and say, oh, God, I, I really want to forgive. God, I, I'm not going to stand before you one day. And you say, no, I won't forgive you because you wouldn't forgive them. God, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in torment because I refuse to forgive this person. They aren't worth it. No, that isn't what I'm supposed to say, is it? <laughs> okay? So, so love, love, acceptance. That is to accept who they are. We're there. Can, can we accept who people are? Yeah. We better, or else we're going to have a miserable life. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, hey, um, this world would be a pretty good world if it wasn't for people. <laughs> no, that was this morning, come think of it. <laughs> Scrooge. Bah, humbug. Okay. So acceptance, forgiveness. We must have forgiveness. I am telling you, if you are in any relationship very long, they're going to hurt you. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. The only way that I can go with the idea of being in a relationship, and that's what I told this guy to the other day, is because I know Jesus can heal my wounded heart. Amen. He said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. So if you don't know that Jesus can heal your heart, you're, you're going you're gonna to have a really narrow number of people you're going to have any relationship with, and even they are going to hurt you and disappoint you along the way at some point. Is that true? How many of you have experienced that to be a reality? There's nobody that won't eventually disappoint or hurt you. Lifetime guarantee. Okay? So the last thing is trust. However, with trust... That is earned. Yeah. Trust is earned. No, just a minute. Yes. Just a minute. Okay, she's leading me into my next point. We, you guys are just leading me into my next point. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Trust is earned. Okay. Now, God says when somebody wrongs us, what do we need to do? Get on the phone and tell everybody else what they have done. <laughs> Facebook, I forgot. I'm, I'm not in this generation. I, I can tell it. Facebook, and let everybody know how terrible they are. Yeah, tag them in so that you can tell them off without having to deal with them. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jesus was in a different generation. He did not have Facebook. What does he say? He says, 
No, he doesn't. When somebody offends you, he says, go to them. Now, I better better read my Bible here. I think it's Matthew chapter 19. (laughs) Shall, Shall we go there? Come on, let's turn to Matthew chapter 19. I think it's 19. Yes, Matthew chapter 18, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 18, come on, let's, let's read the Word of God and see what God says about it. He says, moreover, if your brother trespass against you, go to everybody but him. <laughs> now, verse 15, 18, 15, it says, go and tell the fault between only you and him. Pardon? Okay, good. Boy, you have a lot of repenting to do, don't you? Oh, by the way, I believe that if we've defamed somebody, that we need to go and say, wow, I shouldn't have said that to you. Will you please forgive me? I was out of line. How many have done it wrong? <laughs> okay, I've done it wrong. But then you got to go clean that mess up. He says, go to them alone. So, we have an obligation, if somebody has wronged us, to let them know they've done it. Can I say something to you that's really true? And I know you may have a hard time. There are lots of times that person has no idea they've offended you. And how can they make it right if you don't let them know what they've done? Oh, I'm glad you didn't leave them wondering. Of course, you didn't judge, accuse, or blame at all, right? No accusing, blame. okay, good. Well, you did it right, it's the thing. I know you did it right. Yeah, bought a billboard, let them know. Yeah, well, that's what Facebook is, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so, so the Bible says go to them. How we go and why we go is what's really important. Are you going because God cares about your relationship with them? Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question then. Let, let's let go backwards a little. Remember where we were at, so I'll come back and get that. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Does God love that person? Then... Are you willing to let God love them through you? Can I, can I tell you one that's just not fair? Let me tell you a little story. I told this guy this story too. I said, you know, there's a number of years ago, and uh, God was dealing with some stuff in my life. And I had, I had a brother that I'd painted a house with one time when I was, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. And he was supposed to pay me, I don't know, 300 and some dollars. I don't remember anymore. But <laughs> that is what's so amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go back. Anyway, so uh, just let, let, no, let me tell you, I don't remember anymore. But here's what God said to me. He said, I want you to go and ask him to forgive you for not forgiving him. <laughs> to go ask him to forgive you for not forgiving him. And I said, God, that, that isn't right. Said, That's whacked out. Yeah. But once again, in the midst of my stubbornness and stupidity, I do know that when God speaks to you, it is really important for you to act. So I remember finally deciding to do it one day. I drove back in front of the house about three or four times. And I said, this ain't right. This is messed up. I didn't do the wrong. He's the one that did the wrong. And maybe you don't talk to God like that, but I do. I mean... He knows what's in your heart. You might as well, might as well tell him about it. And uh, so finally I got the courage to go up and, and you know, I walked in and, and, you know, started to stammer for a minute or so and I said, let's get this over with. Hey, I, I, I just came because I wanted to apologize. He said, what for? I said, well, you know, way back when we did this house, I remember then right to the penny. I mean, to the penny. I knew it. I had somebody came to me just recently and said, I know you owe you money and it's this much. How do you know that? I gave it to you a long time ago. I let it go. And, but you know what? When we aren't in the right place, we'll remember. 
because the Holy Spirit won't let us get away with it. Right? How many of you know that? Yeah, he loves us too much to let us get away with it. Right? Yeah. So I said, well, what I, you know, so long ago you didn't pay me that. He said, oh, I don't, I don't remember that. I said, well, anyway, I just hadn't forgiven you. I, I'm sorry for not forgiving you. And I left. No, he never paid me. He didn't do anything. But you know what? It set me free to where I can't remember how much it was. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. It set me free. Yeah. What was God trying to do? He wasn't trying to get that guy straightened out. He was helping me get straightened out. He said, I want you to be free, Roy. Go get this thing dealt with. And you know what? I don't hold it against him. I give it to God. It's God's money. Let him do with what he wants to with it. Because now I'm free. Do you hear what I'm saying? He says, go to that person. Our motive must be for reconciliation in the sense of God values relationship. And he doesn't want us walking in bitterness and resentment and division and strife. So I'm going to go do what I can do to try to reconcile this thing. And I have a whole teaching on care for thing. If you'd like that, we'll, we'll I'd be glad to do that with you. How do we do that right? And boy, it took, it's, I still don't do it right all the time. There's times I just blow it and then I got to go back and straighten it out. But care, if you do it correctly, let me tell you something. The person you have the most understand, misunderstandings with, you'll be, end up having the best relationship if you do it right. The person that violates you the most, if you'll do it right, you'll end up in the best relationship with them because if you do it right and, and God deals with their heart, you get to know them, they get to know you, they get to understand why you do what you don't do and why they don't do what they do and why they did what they did and there's forgiveness and there's love that's radiated and, and, and do I like that idea? No, I don't because I want to be right. Oops. The price of being right is pretty high. Okay. Huh? No, let's finish. Let's go on. You're trying to pick me, get me back where I was. Okay, let's go back where I was. Okay. What do, so what do we do? When I go to them, let, I've had to live this out, by the way, many, many times. I had somebody, I could have ended up spending 20 years in prison because of them. Okay? They falsely accused me of sexual abuse with no, no substantiation, no facts. No, I had the DCF came in and checked it out and said blah, blah, blah. And, you know, there's nothing to it whatsoever. And I, I told that person, here's what I said to them, and this is how I believe we should deal with it. They refused to admit they were wrong and ask forgiveness. I said, okay, listen to me. God says in his word, because I tried to reconcile with them. By the way, the next step is take somebody with you, two or three people. Not decide with you. Listen, not decide with you. To even try you and see maybe if you weren't as much a problem as they were. We don't take witnesses to say, I told them so. No, it's to get it out in the open and hear the other side of it and say, oh, well, what about, what, what, what about, it? yeah. Okay? And he says, and if they won't listen to you, what do you do? Treat them as an outsider. By the way, he's talking about church Christian conflict. Okay? By the way, I believe in doing the same thing in the world. Uh, just we do it in a little different structure, though. And so... Then, if they refuse to deal with it, and the person says, you need to apologize, and I say, I ain't going to apologize over my dead body. He says, treat them as an outsider. What does that mean? Here's, 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 here's what it says. Let me tell you what it says. Here, to me, to Roy McKinney. I mean, he gives a few words, by the way, in the word that tells us one particular thing. Um, treat them like you would any other stranger. That means if they were thirsty, I would give them a drink of water. If they're hungry, I would give them food. Mm, this sounds like a verse in Romans chapter 13. Heaping coals of ashes upon their heads, what are you doing? You're loving them even though they have wronged you. 13, the last few verses, Romans chapter 13. Okay, listen, what's that? Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute, if you'll remind me before it's done. Okay. So, 
I told this person, I said, our relationship is on hold. You refuse to admit you're wrong. You are definitely wrong. Others have tried to deal with it. You insist you're right, you're wrong. I said, our relationship's on hold. I'm going to treat you like I would any other stranger. However, the Bible simply says you don't sit down and eat a meal with them. In other words, you don't have close relationship with them. You don't have close relationship with them. Okay? No, no, here's, here's the tough part. Until you apologize and ask me to forgive you. So after about six months, that person really got desperate. God was dealing with them. It was a real loss in relationship for them. And finally they said, I want to talk to you, Roy. I, I want to straighten this out. And sure as shoot, and I meet with them, and they say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? Because God is a God of reconciliation, when a person admits that they're wrong and has forgiveness, we have a responsibility to give them a small opportunity to earn our trust. You know what? That was the worst thing in the world I'd ever want to do. But I forced myself to do what I knew I needed to do. And that is, I gave them a hug. I was scared to death. They had a knife in their hand. We're going to stick it in my back. Literally, that's, I was that fearful. But because I'm serious about doing things God's way, I did it God's way. And that's why I have a successful life. Is because when we live life God's way, we have a good life. I did the next thing right then because I knew if I put it off, I wouldn't do it. I said, would you like to come over to dinner this weekend? Last thing I wanted to do. The last thing I wanted to do. Listen, I did that for me. I did it to cleanse my heart. And God tells us to do it that way. So what did I do? Thank God my son was here. <laughs> God bless my son Lance. He's an amazing guy. And he understood the situation. And so we had lunch after, I mean, dinner together. We played games together. And when they walked out the door, you know, something, something just lifted off of me. Of course, I had told them, you will never live in my house again. And God dealt with me about that. He said, I never say never to you. So you need to repent of your never. And would you believe a year later, they stay with me for three or four months. Listen to me. God is our protection. He is our keeper. He is our reward. We need to do things the way he says. And so the prog progression is, if you've confronted that person and they've refused to forgive, when they come to you, and I mean to acknowledge a wrong, when they come to you to acknowledge a wrong, you have to be willing to give them, to forgive them, because you already have, so it's already behind you anyway. It's already a done deal, right? The forgiveness is already done, right? Now you're just having to face your offender. Ooh, that makes it, the emotions stir up. All, all the, you know, the thing I was talking about with this guy, all the, you know, rejection, the, all that junk. Okay, you have to deal with all that. But God will help you deal with that. Because if you don't, then you really haven't forgiven. So we must be willing to reconcile and give them opportunities to earn trust bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. Okay? And by the way, you, that person, person could be one of your best friends one day, literally, if they continue to grow in character and all that, and they could be your best friend. I know you can't picture that right now, but I'm just saying that's, that, should be the, that should be a goal in yours of saying, hey, man, I want to have this relationship right. Does God want 
you'd have that relationship, right? I know so. Okay, now, we have different friends and people we don't, we all have different values, we all have different characters. There's some people, I know there's some people sitting here that I will never be their best friend. Just because of differences and well, what's important and all that uh, temperaments and all that stuff. So I realized I'm going to have different levels of relationship, right? You know that, right? Okay. So, and by the way, how many best friends can we have? <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> I mean, that's my question. Is how many best friends do you have time for? So we, but the problem is you're afraid they're going to hurt you again. Yeah, no, you're afraid they're going to hurt you again. Yes. Because if you weren't, then we would be open to saying, okay, I'm willing to give them opportunities to earn trust. I'm willing to forgive. I'm willing to... And that's why I say we must know that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. You are going to be wounded over and over again in life. How many of you have been wounded over and over again? Yeah. Even my sweet little wife, okay, uh, uh, has offended me, as sweet as she is, Okay and hurt me, and, and so on, okay? I've done the same thing to hurt. By the way, do we do it on purpose? Very seldom do people ever, ever, very seldom, do we ever do it on purpose, okay? So, so that's a progression, yes. Right. Sure, sure. Sure. And I tried confronting her. I tried to right. do that. Right. And she said, I'm not doing that. Okay. Then, 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 but. The, but what gave me freedom was there's a scripture verse that says, live at peace with everyone. Mm-hmm. And if you don't yes, lie, that's it. Lies within you. And so I tried, as much as in within you, I live in peace with her. Mm-hmm. But, but, but why? Because trust is earned. You see, if they, if they violate me again, what do I do? We're back to square one again. No, we're back to square one again. And we say, okay, until you ask forgiveness. Now, once they do it two or three times, my thing is, um, you weren't repentant the last two times. Until I see some true evidence of repentance, I'm sorry, our relationship is on hold. And you get somebody with you in some kind of accountable situation. So, no, I believe there's a time to say, no, that there, there's some boundaries here. By the way, good boundaries. There's boundaries that keep us safe. By the way, if you're in danger, if all that kind of stuff, you have to have safe boundaries. And I can't cover everything today, but in general, I'm telling you how normal relationships, because there's some weird relationships out there. That, Listen, you should have nothing to do with them. They're a danger. Okay. And people that uh, are verbal abusively to you, that are you know, uh, physically abusive, uh, those kind of things. No, you, you create a distance saying, Unless I, until I see repentance, and here's the way the repentance is going to look like. I'm going to have somebody report to me that you have changed. Somebody that's responsible and that you have changed for a long term. And then our relationship is still going to be very slow in seeing that you have truly changed. But we must still be willing uh, under guarded circumstances, okay? Uh, you need wisdom. You need to have somebody that's very wise that knows God and hears his voice if you're in one of those really goofy relationships. You hear what I'm saying? So I'm talking about our normal relationships, okay? And, and there's some people, I mean, we're getting in a crazier and crazier world because they've rejected God, okay? So, I mean, it's, uh, there's, some people, they're just so demonized. By the way, she was demonized. It was a demon spirit doing that. It wasn't her. And it was a demon spirit. She was demonized. But you're never going to tame a demon. The only way she's ever going to get free is she gets free of that demon. Okay? So casting that demon out is the only answer. And so you can't have a relationship with a demon. How do you have a relationship with a demon? Yeah. yeah. But Jesus wants to set her free. To accept God's forgiveness and stuff... Jesus wants, how many of you know God wants to set you totally free? Totally free. He wants to set you and I totally free. It is progressive. 
Jesus takes you in your messed up condition, and, and, and it may take a lifetime. Joyce Myers is a prime example. You know, it's taken God 40 or 50 years to get her to where she is today, but God's used that to help others understand there is a pattern and a progression in, in being made whole. So God wants to make every one of us whole. And that he says, I will finish the good work I've begun in you. He's the one that begins. When we come to him and invite him to come and live in our lives, and that we're going to live our life to live and please rule, let him rule and please, be pleased in our life, we begin a journey. I'm not there yet. I know that surprises you, doesn't it? I'm not there yet. He says, when I see him, I'll be like him. <laughs> okay? He'll finish the distance that I can't finish or haven't finished when he gets there. Anybody else have any other questions? Did I answer? Yes. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, 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 but with you, if you've done your part, that's all that matters. If, 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 I, do, if I do my part, Hey, if I come and ask forgiveness of you and you don't want to forgive me, whose problem is it? It's yours, not mine. If I've generally been repentive, it's her problem. Then you live peaceably with all men as much as in your power. No, do you want to be miserable? Give them all the distance they need so you don't get miserable. So, so there is a time to give them distance. Yes. What's the Bible college man? Uh, the Bible college man, actually, I, I don't know what part of the story you want me to tell. Yeah, but anyway, and then, oh, well, the end with that was I just had to exercise it again. And he never, he never apologized, he never changed, but you know what? I did. Listen to me. There is nothing that can happen to you in your life to destroy you except for how you respond to deal with it. God tells us how to deal with life, and if you don't do it God's way, it will lead to your destruction. But I'll tell you what, if you'll live life God's way, you will have life and life more abundantly. Amen. And he will walk you through just what I'm talking about. You know what? God set me free so many times, so many ways, because I chose to do it his way. And I'm free, and some of the people I've had to deal with are still in bondage. Why? They did it their way. What an amazing Redeemer and Savior, Yes. Okay. Okay. But 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 whose problem is that? It's yours. Not even theirs, by the way. It's yours. The grace isn't there for you to share with someone else is for you. In other words, if the offense is not towards you. <laughs> you're right. Nobody's. So 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 my thing is you're taking up somebody else's offense. You you can't you can't do that. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to you. But listen, you think you're protecting. By the way, if a person is dangerous, then what do we do? To keep a distance. Okay? If a person keeps violating you, what do you do? You set up some boundaries. Okay? So there, there is logical things. I just gave you the outline for the normal relationships of life. There are always special things. In those times, you've got to sit down and, and process what boundaries need to be put in place. And there's books called Boundaries by Thompson and what's his name? Uh, whoever it is, called called boundaries. So sometimes you have to put boundaries in relationship. Anybody else? Any other questions? Can can we ask God for help to forgive? Because you can't do it in your own. What are you going to say? Oh boy! Oh, just a minute. Let me get chair. I do that when something begins to bug me, period. When something, something that somebody does. or what, Of course, I ask, you know, God reminds me, you know, you bug other people too. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's why accepting people for who they are. 
Love is accepting you, even though, you know, I happen to be a high D. I'm a driven guy that uh, is, is always wanting to do something. You know, there's other people, them C temperaments are, oh, my goodness. You know, there's all this stuff. She's a C, by the way. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, but are going to be very, very different, and what's important to them is, but we need each other because God literally makes us so we need each other, so we're incomplete without each other. And boy, doesn't that bug you? That means we have to have a relationship, and we have to accept somebody who's different from us. That's just terrible. I mean, God, but God does it so we don't become prideful and all that. So, um, yes, I, I just, I just want to encourage you, listen, follow God's pathway. If you have other things like something special, come and talk to me. We'll pray and ask God to give us wisdom on how to deal with that relationship. But normal relationships, that's how we function. Go to them, and if you want the care fronting, I, I think my secretary has a care fronting material. Uh, here in the teaching helps, it's a lot better, it's a lot easier understood. Uh, God, today, I realize that you knew somebody here needed to hear what we're talking about. And you change what I had to talk about. And so I just ask, Father, for grace that we might receive your grace to be like you. Because you've forgiven us time and time and time again. Thank you, God, for your endless mercy and grace towards us. And I'm just asking, God, that you will change any hard heart that we have, any hardness that we have towards others, and give us your heart of love. And that you will flow through us to hurting, needy, broken people, just like we are. Now go with us and bless our time of fellowship today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Talking to my son Lance. And because this I week, love God and, he, and I learned to obey him, I choose to went to prison. The apostles went to prison because of standing up and, and preaching the Christ. truth. Then the who we are. Right there, am I right? God loves you because you're his son or daughter, but you must. Re